Welcome to July's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is longest increasing subsequence. Given an integer array nums, return the length of the longest strictly increasing subsequence. A subsequence is a sequence that can be derived from an array by deleting some or no elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. 3627 is a subsequence of the array 0316227. So essentially, a subsequence is going to be in order, but doesn't necessarily need to be next to each other like a subarray. So if we had this example here, we could easily think of a recursive solution starting at the zero index and go down all the different paths that we could take. For instance, with zero, we can go to three or we can go to one or we can go to six. And then from that point on, recursively keep continuing all the way down the line, see which path is the longest, but that's gonna be exponential. We can easily think that there has to be some sort of uh, dynamic programming approach as well. So say that uh, we had an array. Each one of these indexes has at least a length of one. So we can already begin with that as our base case. What we'll do is start at the first index and look behind. And basically you can think of like, we're building these up through sub problems. If we had a, an array with just zero, we already know the length is one, right? But with three, uh, what we can do is just look be behind and say, look, is three bigger than the number right here? If it is, then take the length that we've calculated and add one to that and update that right here. Now what this is gonna allow us to do is uh, build this up. We can see with like one, we're gonna look behind all the different indexes before that. With zero, we can see one is greater than zero. So we can add one to here, that's gonna be two. But three, it's not greater than three, so we can't add it to that length. So that's that's going to be nothing. So basically, at this point, we're basically calculating 0, 1. Uh, but we can't do 3, 1, right? Now let's look at 6. Let's look behind at 0. We know 0, 6 would work. So we can include, increase that to 2. We know 0, 3, 6 would work. So that would be 2 plus 1 is 3. And we also know 0, 1, 6 would work as well. So as long as the 6 is greater than the number here, we'll just take the DP value and add 1. That still remains as 3. Now at 2, uh, we can see it's bigger than this, so that's going to be 2. It's bigger than this, so that's going to be at least 3, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be a n squared approach, right? But let's begin with that to make sure that works. Uh, let's see. We'll first initialize our n to be the length of nums, and we need our dp array, and that's going to be just 1 times n. Now for n in range of n, and for i in range of whatever uh, this n is right now, what we're going to do is check to see if the value is bigger than the index that we're checking. So uh, if nums n or I should say if nums i is greater than nums n. No, wait, sorry. It's the other way around. <laughs> if n is bigger than the uh, number here that we're checking then let's take our dp of i and we're going to update dp of n to equal dp this plus one. But I think we have to take the max here in case it uh, is actually smaller. That certainly could happen. So dp of n or dpi plus one. And I believe that would be it. We just do that and literally we can just return the max of our DP at this point. So let's see if this works. I may have missed something here. Uh, maybe not. Okay, that looks like it's working. So let's submit it. So this would be N squared and time complexity, or I'm sorry, time complexity is going to be N squared and the space complexity is going to be O of N. So easy enough, right? But they did give you a follow-up here. Uh, can we make this n log n? So, well, let's think about what we're doing with, uh, with this example again. When we're trying, when we use a DP array to uh, iteratively build up our subproblems, what if we kind of switch that a little bit and instead created a DP array, or it's not really a DP array, it's more like a temp array, starting with this zero. And what we'll do is see if we could add this value to our, our list here. Like we'll do a binary search to see where we would insert this next number. 
And if we find that it's going to be at the very end, we'll just append it. We'll increase it. So basically, we're creating our, our longest path here. But once, when we see one, like one isn't going to be uh, inserted here, it's going to be inserted in between. What we'll do is say, look, if this value is less than that value that currently exists, let's update it. So we're kind of trying to like minimize this path right now uh, as far as possible. And because we know that this has to be in order, the logic kind of takes care of itself. So at six, we see that that's going to be inserted at the end. So we increase it. Now two, we see it's going to be inserted here. So we just update it since it's less. Now two here, same thing. It doesn't do anything, so we can't increase that. And seven, again, we increase it right here. So we can see like this would be the maximum length. Um, and this would be an n log n solution. All right, so if we did that, let's see. Uh, I'm going to call this, it's not really a DP array, so I'm going to call it temp. And for n in range of n, we'll have to have two cases here. If uh, let's see. Well, in the beginning, we need to have the value itself to, be, to begin. So we start with zero. And let's see. We'll do a if. Um, okay, we'll first do a bisect binary search to the left side of our temp and our value that we're checking. And I don't think we actually need the index number, so I'm just going to say for n in nums. Okay, we're going to look at this and check to see if this is um, if x if this is equal to the length of the temp array. Well, that means it's at the very end, right? So we can append it. We will take our number and append it to our temporary array. That would be n. Now, otherwise, uh, so it's going to be somewhere in the middle here, right? If uh, this x value, no, let's say temp of x. If this value is greater than the end that we've just checked, then let's update it. We'll say uh, make this equal to n instead, thereby minimizing this as far as possible. So at the very end, we don't return the max anymore. We return whatever the length of this temporary array is. So let's make sure this works. Okay, that looks like it's working. Submit it. And there we go. So that's a lot faster. This is going to be n log n with um, o of n space complexity. Now, there is one other approach using binary index trees, but yeah, no, it was just wait, uh, it was complete overkill, and I, I simply ha I don't think it's worth it. Um, maybe one day I'll come back to this because this is a pretty classic problem, one that I would definitely recommend you knowing. At at the very least, the dynamic programming solution. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.